Now let's go to the actual audio sound bites from the debate. This is Trump and Kasich going at it over immigration. For the 11 million people, come on, folks, we all know you can't pick them up and ship them across, back across the border. It's a silly argument. It's not an adult argument. It makes no sense. All I can say is you're lucky in Ohio that you struck oil. That's for one thing. Let me just tell you that Dwight Eisenhower, good president, great president, people liked him. I like Ike, right? The expression, I like Ike, moved a million and a half illegal immigrants out of this country. Dwight Eisenhower. You don't get nicer. You don't get friendlier. They moved a million and a half people out. We have no choice. And Harry Truman even more. The combination of Truman and Eisenhower, we deported 6.4 million illegal immigrants. We either deported them or they left on their own in advance of being deported. But the numbers are a little over 2 million for Eisenhower and in the 3.5 to 4 million range for Harry Truman. And these deportations happened at a point in American history where we were not permitting any immigration of any kind. You know, I still shock people when I tell them this, if they don't know it that there was no immigration in America from 1924 to 1965. There was none. People don't believe it. And then when I explain why it makes sense, well, because we had all of this immigration in years prior, we had to assimilate these new immigrants. They wanted to be Americans. We had to assimilate them. They can't believe there was never any, but there were people trying to get in. There were illegals, but they were deported. That was the point that Trump was uh, making. Now, Kasich, however, was having very little of it. He continued, and Trump eventually gets tired of being lectured. Jerry, Gerald, my, Gerald, it was just, just like, I got What happened back. to my Governor, you know, back? You're not going to have my back. I'm going <laughs> to have my back. Let Governor, me say Governor, a couple things here. First Governor, of all, you should let Jeff grown, speak. We have grown. No, it's unfair. <laughs> the fact is, all I'm suggesting, no. we can't ship 11 million people out of this country Children would be terrified yeah, okay. and it will okay. not yeah. work. Built an unbelievable company worth billions and billions of dollars. Mr. I don't have to hear from this Mr. man. Mr. Believe me. <laughs> I don't know what this has got to do with anything. But it's funny. <laughs> I built an unbelievable company with billions and billions of dollars. I don't have to hear this. <laughs> yes. And Jeb finally gets in on the action here. And he advocates for the Democrat position on amnesty. Listen to this. Thank you, Donald, for allowing me to speak at the debate. That's really nice of you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> what a generous man you are. 12 million illegal immigrants to send them back, 500,000 a month, is just not, not possible. And it's not embracing American values. And it would tear communities apart. And it would send a signal that we're not the kind of country that I know America is. And even having this conversation sends a powerful signal. They're doing high fives in the Clinton campaign right now when they hear this. That's the problem with this. Right. And you heard some applause there from that was the donors uh, in the audience. Chamber of Commerce was there. And I mean, Bush has got his supporters and they believe this. I mean, when he says, by the way, who says 500000 a month? Who says that you've got to do this inside of a year? Who's put a time frame on this? You know, once you start doing it, it's going to speed up. Now, this is dynamic. It's not static. If this were to ever begin. But it's not embracing American. What, American values that are ignore the law? American values. What about the American worker? What about what about the issue of the economic impact of all this? These people look at this as a compassion, civil rights issue. Here's Ted Cruz to uh, clean it all up. What was said was right. The Democrats are laughing because if Republicans join Democrats as the party of amnesty, we will lose. The politics of it would be very, very different if a bunch of lawyers or bankers were crossing the Rio Grande or if a bunch of people with journalism degrees were coming over and driving down the wages in the press. (laughs) Then we would see stories about the economic calamity that is befalling our nation. 
And I will say, for those of us who believe people ought to come to this country legally and we should enforce the law, we're tired of being told it's anti-immigrant. It's offensive. That was the moment of the debate for me, because this is the issue. And Cruz framed it. You know, I opened the program today saying this is this is one of these things that's so obvious that I... <laughs> I've, I've been remiss not mentioning it because it's something that's so obvious. I just figure everybody on our side understands. I, too, am tired of being called anti-immigrant and, and racist and all this stuff. But it is. It's an economic issue. And it, it, the idea that the left and the moderates in our, in our wing try to sell this as, as a civil rights issue and as a compassion issue. And I addressed it last week. This is what's wrong with that is, well, what? These are not even Americans. Why are we bending over backwards to satisfy police people who are not even Americans at the expense of people who are? The American people have expressed it in so many ways, election after election, poll after poll. They do not want people to be able to violate our immigration law. They want the law to stand for something and they want it to be enforced. And they're ignored and they're called names. Anti-immigrant, racist, bigot, whatever it is. So Cruz cleans this all up by saying none of that's true. We're not opposed to legal immigration. And then tying it into the fact that there's a dire economic consequence to all of this for actual Americans. It's depressing wages. It's hurting employment overall. It's one of the reasons that 94 million Americans are not working.